When I was a broke high school student, I would spend hours on YouTube looking up Lamborghini videos and how to make money online. Always trying to figure out how much money do I need to make every single month to be able to afford a Lamborghini and what can I do to be able to make that amount of money. My name is Joaquin Corrales and in this video, I'm gonna be going over the exact payment on my Lamborghini. I'm gonna be telling you how much I paid, what my interest rate is and absolutely everything. And in the end, I'm gonna share with you a secret that banks don't want you to know about financing these cars. Usually in videos like this, you know, the guy walks around the car, he shows you how nice it is, and it takes him forever to finally tell you what you're here to find out. Well, I'm not gonna do that. I don't wanna waste your time. The only thing that I do wanna ask you is to smash the like button so that we could trick the YouTube algorithm into showing this video to at least one more person. And so here it is. My monthly payment on this car is $5,250 four dollars the monthly insurance cost is 230 dollars and the monthly gas cost i mean i don't even know but it has to be a lot i mean this car lives at the gas station like literally after we're done filming this video i have to go straight to the gas station now i know this is insane i mean if you would have told me three years ago that i would have been paying a teacher's yearly salary on a car i would have never believed you but the bottom line is that it's really all math so let's go ahead and dive into my computer so I could show you the exact numbers and exactly how everything works. And so I bought this car about a year and a half ago for $560,000. Now when you buy a car for $560,000 in Florida, you need to pay 6% in sales tax. So a car that's usually $560,000, you're gonna end up paying somewhere close to $593,000 instead. However, when I bought this car, I traded in another Aventador that I had for $430,000. So basically what that means is that I'm only responsible for the sales tax between the two sales prices, right? One of the cars is $560,000, the other one's $430,000. So I'm only responsible for $130,000 in sales tax, which means that I'm actually all in for $568,000. Now, when you're trying to buy a car for this amount of money, you basically have two options. You could either finance the car or you could just pay it cash. So when you finance a car, there's an interest rate, which is basically the cost of the debt that you are taking on. So for example, if you have a $100,000 loan at 5% interest, then you're paying $5,000 a year in debt, right? Now, forget about your monthly payment for the sake of this example. Let's just think about the interest rate, which is you know what you're paying to have that debt. So you're paying around $416 a month for this debt. So how I look at this is that if I could take those $100,000 and make more than $416 a month, then I would rather take on the debt as opposed to leaving the money in equity in the car, right? Now, obviously you have to think about that a lot when you could buy the car cash versus finance, but the main idea that I'm trying to give you here is that 99% of the time, whether you can buy the car cash or not, you should be financing it because most of the time you can use that money to generate a higher return than what you're paying for in interest rates. So now that I've gone over that, let's go over my loan for this car. So I paid $568,000 for the car and I put down $200,000. So I financed $368,000 at a 5% interest. So basically what this means is that even though my monthly payment is $5,200, most of that is going into equity and my actual cost of the debt is $1,533 per month. So basically in my mind, how I think about the cost of ownership for a car like this is, okay, I'm losing $1,500 every month to interest, right? The cost of the debt, plus any possible depreciation that the car can have. Now this car, you remember how I paid $568,000 for it, right? Well, this car right now is selling for close to $750,000, which really makes it one of the best investments that I've ever made. Because if I sell this car right now, I would be making over $150,000 in profit, which is absolutely insane. Now, over the past four years, I've had a bunch of cars. I've had close to like 11 or 12 cars or so. And every single one of those cars has been sourced by one of my really good friends, PJ. PJ owns a company called Exotic Car Hacks that teaches people how to buy exotics and supercars without losing a lot of money. Now, let's go over a secret that most banks do not want you to know. So as you know, 
most of the time, it's better to finance the car because you can use that money to generate a higher return somewhere else. Now, when I was first looking to finance my first supercar, I wanted to buy a Lamborghini Huracan. And at around this time, I was making around 20 to $30,000 a month with my e-commerce business. So I thought, look, I'm making way more than enough money. I could afford this car. I could pay the monthly payment, you know, 10 times, right? With the amount of money that I'm making every single month. So I should be fine, right? Well, I thought that banks said the only thing that they cared about was how much money you made. And as long as you make enough money, then they'll give you the loan. But with car loans, it's not like that. It's very different than getting a mortgage, for example, which they only really care about how much money you make and your debt to income ratio. The number one thing that banks care about when they're giving you a loan for a car is your previous history of car loans. So they want to see that you've had another loan of a similar size before they give you any loan for a car. And it has to be a car loan. And they will only go up to 50 to 60% higher than that. So this completely blew me away because when I wanted to first get started, I wanted to buy a Huracan and I was getting ready to put down maybe 40, $50,000. And the maximum amount of money that they would lend me was $50,000. And I was like, how does this make any sense? The payment on $50,000 in a loan is so little compared to how much money they're making. It was really a punch in the face because I couldn't get what I could afford. And so what I had to do was I had to get a Lamborghini Gallardo and I paid $135,000 for this car and I put $80,000 down, which is a huge percentage. Usually you don't have to put that much down, but I was forced to put that much because I had no loan history at all. So what this means for you is that if you're going to go out there and you're, you know, you're watching this video because you want to buy a Lamborghini in the future or a supercar, maybe an Audi R8 or something like that, you're probably going to have to work your way up unless you want to put a bunch of money down. I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about how it works to buy a car like this and what are the costs associated with it. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more like these, make sure that you smash the like button, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.